In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. It was rare for the Lord to speak in those days. Visions were uncommon. One day it happened that Eli was lying down in his room. His eyes were beginning to grow dim. He could no longer see. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord where the ark of God was, when the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. He answered, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. He replied, I did not call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy, and he said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if someone calls, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. All Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, came to know that Samuel was accredited as a prophet of the Lord. The Word of the Lord Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord and has not gone over to the rebels who follow false gods. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depths of my heart. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Through him give thanks to God the Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord.
On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up, and the fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. The whole town came crowding round the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere, to the neighbouring country towns, so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, in today's first reading, we have one of Scripture's most popular and profound phrases. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And the truth is that it is much easier to say it than to do it. Do we know people or have we had experiences whereby we were having a conversation or sharing something important with someone and then moments later we get asked the same question that we had just spoken of as though what we said moments ago did not happen when in fact they had not listened to it. Did you even listen to what I was saying? Those are some of the things we might say. Perhaps we might find ourselves saying this to people. Or maybe we are the ones that people are, are saying this to. Do I listen well to others? Or do I, in starting to listen to someone, already have some preconceived notion and ideas and questions and even conclusions in my mind and have in fact effectively stopped listening to the other person. Do I operate like this? And perhaps I do, but I am unaware. Because at the start of our first reading, we were already told that the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And only later on, we are told that Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And so, we may or may not have been doing things for years, but we may not have had that self-awareness or knowledge or understanding of why or how come we do what we do. In today's Gospel, Jesus in his ministry of healing goes to the house of Simon Peter and Andrew and heals Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And then more people are brought to Jesus for healing and, and this house becomes a makeshift clinic. And if you think about it, what happens if a doctor doesn't fully listen to the ailments of the patient and comes quickly to his or her own conclusion? Then maybe something important might have been missed out. And so the cause of treatment may not be effective or bring about 
greater healing. You know, not all of us are doctors, but all of us are invited to participate in this ministry of healing of Jesus. We may not be able to administer physical medication, but we can administer our physical presence and our time and our attention in listening and empathizing with others and lifting them to God in our prayers. Jesus sets the example for us in going off to a lonely place to pray. There, that is our prayer life. And that is our relationship with God. That relationship with God that will sustain us, especially when, like Jesus, when all is brought to us, all those who were suffering in one way or another. Let us then, dear brothers and sisters, ask for God's grace to be more present, more attentive, to listen better to others, so that in turn, we ourselves will be able to be in the disposition to recognize and listen to God who speaks to us in various ways and through various people. Amen. Let us then, dear brothers and sisters, united in God, listen with our hearts as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.